In this video, Kevin and I, mainly me. <laughs> she watches more TV than I do. I'm gonna be, we're both gonna be talking about the TV shows or movies that we watch during the month of uh, March. And honestly, I didn't even write down regular stuff. Like, I didn't even write down Young Sheldon, Young Sheldon or the Connors. Or I mean, those are a given. I didn't write down, um, oh my gosh, I forgot. Survivor. I didn't write down Big Brother. We Big watched Brother. We watched all of... Uh, the Celebrity Big Brother in the UK. Yes, we watched the whole series. And I didn't even write that down, oh my gosh. Um, I, okay, I'm just going to say this, since we're, I've brought it up. I was shocked by who won it. Yeah, I mean, he's not a bad guy. I mean, no. Just, I can't believe he was popular enough over some of the other people to yes. win. Yes, yes, that he would have been the most, and I won't give it away in case, you know, you plan on watching it later. You know, you might be saving it up for the summer to watch it or something like that. You might want to binge it. Uh, but I actually said the words to Kevin when it got down to like the final three. I said, if so-and-so wins it, then this show is rigged because there's no way that he's more popular than all these other people. Yes, he is. And I'll be darned he won. So now you know it is a, a male that wins it. But still, I mean, it's just, it It was a good series. Mm, yeah, it was good. They, Sharon Osbourne's in it for just a short period yeah, of time. Yeah, like the first week or something. Yeah. It's not very long. She was in it. She's probably the most well-known one as far as we're concerned. Yes, um, but there are, so we learned throughout the show that there are some very well-known people. The, from the UK. Oh, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, and one of those girls was from here. Yeah. Uh, but didn't I didn't. Know I didn't know her. Yeah, I didn't know her. <laughs> she um, She's so, a singer actress on Broadway, so I, I don't know. So we're oh, the Amazing Race has just started, yeah, I'm watching that. which I absolutely love. And listen, they're they, doing the non-elimination legs, so they don't eliminate. It. I mean, they eliminate everybody every leg. So right. there's, there's no. Well, you get eliminated or not, you know they're gonna go. Right. Yeah, at the end of the episode. It's hilarious because I follow The Amazing Race on Facebook. And so if something funny happens during the show, you can always depend. <laughs> you can always depend on Facebook. Everybody's gonna be talking and leaving these comments. The comments are gold. It's like reading reviews when you're gonna buy something from Amazon and you start reading the reviews of something. That's what it's like reading when something happens on on, on any of these shows. You go to Facebook to the group because there's a group for everything, believe me. Even shows from years ago, there's a group for them. And people are just hilarious in their comments. So anyway, I didn't even write those down. Um, I'm gonna talk a lot though at first because I'm gonna talk about the things that I watched without Kevin. And it was a lot, it was. Uh, so, but Kevin will get his chance. It's not gonna be just the Tammy show, so. Um, I don't sit and watch TV while I'm working. I watch like YouTube videos or people playing a game or whatever. That's what I watch, so it's not shows. Yes, when I'm working, I'm also watching a show at yeah. the same time. So that's um, why I don't watch as much. Yeah, uh, but do I get just as much out of it? Most for the most part. And if I turn something on where I'm not going to be able to get, like, there's a movie in here I'm going to talk about that I started watching while I was working, and I thought, nope, right. I have to start this completely over when I can com give my complete attention to it, and I'm glad I did, so we'll talk about that. But I watched Feud. A friend of ours, uh, Josh, had told me years ago, you need to watch uh, Feud. And uh, when the first season was out, it was just about the feud between Joan Crawford and Betty Davis. Well, they have since done a feud too, and um, it, it's the guy that does American Horror Story. Um, shoot, I wanna say his name's Ryan, but I know that's not right. Anyway, um, this season, this feud too, has been Truman Capote. So in the first season, um, Jessica Lange played Joan Crawford, and Susan Sarandon played Betty Davis. And it was excellent. It, it, it really was. They did a terrific job. And then now this last season, Tom Hollander from, uh, he's been in all kinds of things, but The White Lotus is what some of you, the second season of The White Lotus. Um, 
he uh, he plays Truman Capote, and his voice is so, you heard his voice. Mm -hmm. He would talk like very annoying. it was yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. And you think his voice will change in a minute? No, nope. no, it never does. It stays that way um, and then Naomi Watts, Chloe Savici, uh, uh, Diane Lane, Calista Flockhart. Uh, Demi Moore, Molly Ringwald. There's a lot of famous women in the uh, second season, uh, but I really enjoyed both of these. Uh, and uh, those are on uh, Amazon Prime. Uh, you can uh, rent it on Amazon Prime uh, video. Um, I watched uh, Society of the Snow. Uh, this is 2023 Netflix. The flight of a rugby team crashes on a glacier in the Andes. The few passengers who survive the crash find themselves in one of the world's toughest environments to survive. So if you've ever seen the movie from years ago, it was called Alive. It, you see this. You see this, uh, this rugby team. They're on a plane. Um, they're going on their way to a game and they crash. And um, the big uh, thing that most people take away from this is to survive. The people who survived had to actually eat. Cannibalize. They, they had to eat some of their, the people in the plane uh, that had died. Uh, but what is amazing to me from this, well, first of all, it was very well done. If you've seen Alive, I liked uh, Society of the Snow better. Um, it actually shows, like, at the end of the movie, you um, you get to see the guys when they go in and they're seen by medical. These actors really lost weight in order to play these roles. So, they look like, um, I mean, they were super, super, super thin because they had actually lost the weight like they would have right. had they been there. And so, like, they were actually on diet to as they were filming to make them, okay, this is day one. This is day, and they were eating that way. But what amazes me about this is that people actually go to this area today on, like, field trips. Like, there's a monument there. There's a monument that's been erected for these guys and the, the people who died. And... People actually take their vacation and like, we're going to go see where this plane um, crashed. Um, they said that there is no, like the plane's not there. They, they, they caught it on fire. But they said that anything that was under that snow would still be there. Um, but it just amazes me that people go there on vacation, go to this plane, this site where this plane crashed. Um, and you, there's YouTube videos. You, you can see it in YouTube videos. So that was, it was very interesting, kind of a haunting type movie to watch. Um, then I watched one called God Forbid, 2022 on Hulu. A former, former pool attendant at the Fountain Blue Hotel shares the intimate details of his seven-year relationship with a charming older woman, Becky Falwell, and her husband, uh, Jerry Falwell Jr. So, you may um, uh, recognize the name Jerry Falwell. Uh, he's very a very famous, uh, what would you say, evangelist. TV about evangelist. Yeah. Um, he founded Liberty University, and uh, Jerry Falwell Jr. was really big, and his wife Becky were really big at Liberty University, which amazes me, still around, parents still send their kids there, it still is. What amazes me is if you go, you can get online right now, right now, and you can go to Liberty University, if you type in, if you go to the student code of conduct and just read through the student co code of conduct, it's very surprising. Like if you do certain things, you will get fined, like a money fine. Mm -hmm. Like if you're caught uh, drinking a beer, even though you're 21, whatever, you're gonna get fined. Um, if you say a cuss word, you're gonna get fined. If you don't dress in a certain way, you're gonna get fined. It's just, 
it's very surprising. Um, but that, that was um, very, very interesting and enlightening to watch. I would recommend that. I watched one on, uh, it's a 2023 Paramount Plus. It's called The Twelfth Victim. This is actually a documentary crime drama. And um, it it's, was about the 1958 Charles Starkweather and Carol Ann Fugate murder case in which the teenage couple was charged and convicted of brutally killing 11 victims at random. If you are easily bothered by details, gory details, then I would not watch this because you're not, you don't necessarily see things, but some of the details that they're giving you might really bother you. Uh, some of the things that this uh, guy did. So, we'll leave that at that. I thought that was, it was, it was an interesting documentary though. Very well done. Um, then I watched one called Apples Never Fall. It's 2024 on Peacock. It has Annette Benning and Sam Neill. Uh, it also has uh, Jake Lacey from The White Lotus, and that's why I watched it. Because in the first season of The White Lotus, He's kind of the uh, the arrogant, uh, the rich boy mm -hmm. that has the real pretty wife, um, and he I expects to get his way. I like him. I like him a lot. I think um, I think he's a really good actor. So this show, Apples Never Fall, it's about um, Annette Benning. Her name is Joy, and she disappears just suddenly disappears in the show. And so the there's four adult children and and the husband and they have to they're trying to figure out what happened to her where did she go uh, is she dead is she alive you know what's going on with her this one it's um, it's it wasn't the writing wasn't good enough for uh, uh, any of these people. I think Annette Benning. I think I feel bad for the actors and actresses in this just because the story, it started out like this is going to be really interesting. And then by the very end of the show, it's like, it, it reminds you of one of these, uh, just, it's, it, there just wasn't enough depth to it. And it was more like, I hate to say like a teenager, like, um, it, it just was a kind of a happy, campy ending to this whole thing. So, you know, it's one of those things, if you watch it, just don't take it seriously. Don't expect a lot to, to come of it because it doesn't. Um, a couple more things I watched. Uh, the Zone of Interest. This one is the one that I was talking about that I tried to watch while I was working and I couldn't because you have to read subtitles. <laughs> and it was like- Can't do that while you're working. No, it was like, oh, I have to read the subtitles and I really want to pay close attention to this uh, because this is an important story and I hadn't heard this story before. It's 2023, you can rent it on Amazon Prime Video. Um, it's Auschwitz Commandant Rudolf Haas, I don't know how you say his name, and his wife Hedwig strive to build a dream life for their family in a house and garden beside the camp. So you literally have Auschwitz, the camp, where these horrific things are going on. Um, on, the, on there's a huge wall. And they are literally living in this house on the other Where's... side of the wall where they have gardens with flowers and fruits. And I mean, it's, it's beautiful. Um, and, and, and you hear the sounds. You don't see. So this is one of the few movies about Auschwitz that um, th don't show you things. This one, you don't see the horrors. You just hear the sounds. And then you also see like they're laying out in their garden by the pole and they look up and you see all of this, the smoke coming out of the, where these people are being uh, burned alive, you know? And so it's about their life. Like 
<laughs> them, them, and the wife wants to stay there. That's the thing. Is like the main commander. He's been he's been given orders. You've got to go to this other camp. And she's like, I'm not leaving. I'm staying here. We'll be waiting for you when you come back because she loves it so much. She wants to stay there, even though these horrible things are going on right on the other side of the wall. And it they're is, like in their little bubble and. It's just, it's amazing. It's completely it just separate from reality. blows your mind. And it's one of these that has, it's, it will make you think about it later. You will keep thinking about it. It'll keep coming back, little things about it. And at the very end of the movie, um, I'm not giving anything away by telling you this, but at the very end of the movie, you actually see what is on that site now. Hmm. And it's it's very interesting i would watch that um the next thing i watched i watched it without kevin i didn't know kevin wanted to watch it i feel really bad i'm not that type of person anytime he wants to watch something i will wait for him it was quiet on set the dark side of kids tv 2024 on max and kevin's like we could watch that and i said i've already watched it it was only like four yeah, i was like oh well it was only like four episodes, but you could, I would watch it with you. I would watch it again with you. Um, it is a docu-series that uncovers the toxic culture behind some of the most iconic children's shows of the late 1990s, early 2000s. And so this was a time where they're talking about on Nickelodeon where our kid, I, I, it, it wasn't a time where we were watching Nickelodeon. So like, we we watched it when Rugrats was on. Hey Arnold, um, Cat Dog. Cat Dog was Ed Ed and Eddie on there too, or was that so. on? A, or was that on Cartoon Network? Might be on Cartoon Network. I can't remember. Anyway, they all run together. That's the time mm -hmm. that Kevin and I were watching. Uh, you said Hey Arnold. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they also had that skate the skateboards, the kids on the yeah, skateboards. It was a cartoon. Anyway, we watched them too. And that was the that was what we were watching. So this is talking about the shows where it's real people, and we didn't watch any of these no, shows. That was like after. Yeah, we did not watch any of these shows. We we had moved on. Our kids had moved on. So is it on. all about Nickelodeon shows? Yes. Okay. So so I'm, I'm glad I didn't watch it then. Because I thought it was going to be more about the 80s shows. No, it was none of these shows. I didn't recognize any okay. of these shows. Well, I'm glad I didn't watch it then because I, no. I thought it would be about some of the 80s kids that were raised back in the 80s, like the um, different strokes and, and uh, no. the, all those all those shows that had kids in them. Yeah, yeah, no, it was none of that. The one, one of Years nope, and uh, none Silver of that. Spoon and all those the only thing I took away from this, I took a note, is that Ariana Grande started out on Nickelodeon. Yeah, I knew that. I didn't know that. I was <laughs> like, oh my gosh, she's yeah. on that Nickelodeon. A lot of them did. I had no idea. Disney and Nickelodeon. A lot of I never heard from her until she was singing, singing about bacon and eggs. Yeah. You know, I, I never heard of Ariana Grande. I had no clue that she started out. And then honestly, I, I really think I heard about her brother, Frankie, before I heard about her because... He was on a Big Brother, or I guess it was right about the same, same time. time. Yeah. He was on she Big was already Brother. Well yeah, she was, but then it kind of hit at the same time where they got like Frankie to go on to Big Brother, and I really liked him. And it's like uh, with his personality, I'm surprised he's not just as big as she is because they both have these huge personalities. Um, but it was interesting if you if it bothers you to hear about pedophiles, yeah. then you won't want to watch that. Because that's that it does. Shame. Yes, it does have that in there. Um, then I watched a movie called Priscilla. It's uh, 2023 and it's on Max. And it's talking about when uh, Priscilla meets Elvis. And you know, she was only like 13. I think that I knew she was young. She was like 13 years old. They didn't get into a relationship though until later, did they? The movie makes it seem like they did not sleep together for quite a while because right. he didn't choose to sleep together for a while. That's what the movie makes it seem like. But who knows? In reality, who knows? Um, and, and what amazes me, too, is that her parents let her go. Like, they let her... She was under Elvis's care. Um, of course, you've got this... I'm sure her parents had to think... This is a guy that has money and, you know, he could really do things for her and give her a good life. That happened for a couple of 
famous people back uh -huh. in that time. Yeah. So. Uh, so, well, yeah. So, uh, it was interesting. Uh, it was a one-time watch for me. Um, it was interesting how he could turn. Like, he could be really nice, but then he was, he, they, the movie made him seem like a mean person. It really did. It made him seem like a, uh, first of all, a cheating constantly. And it also, it, it made him seem mean to me. Um, which I never thought of him being a mean person. And then the last thing that I watched by myself was called Spaceman. It's 2024. It's Netflix. It's Adam Sandler. And Adam Sandler, he's he's been up in space for uh, like a half a year, so like six months. And he is he's worried about the things that are going on uh, with his wife on earth uh, because uh, he all of a sudden doesn't hear from her. And so there's a creature, there's a creature that's on the ship with him and this creature really helps him out because he's, he, I think he doesn't realize how lonely he is. He, he doesn't admit to being lonely, but he is actually incredibly lonely, and this creature gives him somebody else to talk to, and um, he also realizes that, uh, you know, that he, he may have taken things for granted on Earth, and, you know, here he is out in space, and he's a long way from home, and it's one of these, it was a one-time watch. very weird. It was very, very bizarre to where you're like, what the heck did I just watch? Because I only saw little pieces of it. And every time I would look and be like, what the hell is she watching? <laughs> it was, <laughs> it was, it was it, and if you've seen it, you'll know why he's saying that. Because yes, he saw the creature. And you're like, what in the world is am I watching? Um... It didn't look like my kind of movie. I like a good sci-fi movie. That did not look like my kind of movie. I do have to this, say. This looked more psychological, like in your head space kind it, of. It, yeah, it was It was a good one-time watch. Um, I do have to say, a lot of people make fun of Adam Sandler for his acting. I thought he did a really good job in this. They they make fun of him in his younger days, doing all the goofy characters. The goofy things, stuff, The yeah. comedy stuff. Yeah, but he's Happy played some, Gilmore. He's played some serious roles. Yes, so, so I thought, as far as acting goes, I thought he did a good job in my, this The first time I ever saw him in a serious role was when he had the little kid. Um, I can't think of what the name of that was. When the little blonde kid, he, he like had to, I don't know if it's sister's kid or cousin, I don't remember, but he had to basically raise this little boy. Right. That was a, he had was a really serious role, so uh -huh. it, was, it was really good. Um, okay. Don't remember the name of it though. We watched. I have to look it up. Now. So, look up. so the, all the sirens go by every time we're, we're we live on a very busy road. Uh, we watched together a movie called Land of Bad. It is 2024, and you can rent it on Amazon Prime Video. It has Liam Helmsworth who plays Gail Hawthorne in The Hunger Games. Um, it has Russell Crowe. It has Big, Big Daddy. Daddy. Yeah. Big Daddy. That was the first one that I... Um, yeah. I don't think I've... I don't remember that. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. I remember seeing the poster, yeah. but I don't remember I, watching it. That was kind of a... Kind of a serious role. For it, it still has funny moments. Too. It yeah. also has Land of Bad, Liam Helmsworth, Russell Crowe. It also has, I'm going to butcher his name, but I have to say his name because he's important. Milo or Milo Ventimiglia. I don't know how to say his name. The reason I'm bringing him up is because he played Jack Pearson in This Is Us. Yeah, the dad. Yes. Mandy Moore's husband in This Is Us. That's who he was. I recognized him the minute he popped on screen. Yeah. I recognized him. Kevin's I like, him. that's the, and I said, who? And he's like, the dad, and this is this. And I'm like, that is I recognized his voice the minute yeah. he said like three words. It's like, hey, that's that guy. Yes. And so, uh, I did, they all did a good job. I don't think it would have dawned on me who he was for a long time. Because he really doesn't look like him. No. And he was real muscular and. Yeah, yeah, you don't picture the dad in This Is Us being that muscular. The men in this movie. The, the, they all work out. They all work out. <laughs> they, like, this is their job. Yeah. Every day they work out. Yeah, probably, but it is their job. Um, 
yeah, it is their job. Uh, I really, really enjoyed this movie. Yeah. It, what it is, it's um, a U.S. Army Special Forces unit is ambushed during a mission to retrieve an intelligent asset, and their only remaining hope lies with a remote Air Force drone operator assisting them through a brutal 48-hour battle for survival. So, Russell Crowe... That kind of describes it, but then you watch the movie and it's like... Eh. It's uh, yeah, hard kinda. to, it's from that, and you're like, what the heck? But I'm going to tell you. So, there is a base in Las Vegas, which I had no idea. And so, this Air Force, Air Force base. base. And so, Russell Crowe is um, at and the Air Force he's base. He's a drone pilot. Yes, in Las Vegas. And so, these other, these guys on this mission are on the other side of the world, and they can see them. They can like track them and see exactly where they go. And they, they're they like making their way through these woods and they can tell you, oh, you've got people coming in or you're safe to go, you're safe to walk. And um, it, it's amazing that they can do that, mm -hmm. that they can watch them. Oh, they could probably do a lot more they don't tell us about. Oh, listen, <laughs> it, it was just fascinating. Mm -hmm. And to know that that they can track you like that. I thought it I thought it was just it was a good movie. Right. It was, it was definitely it. worth watching once if you oh, like yeah. an action movie. Yeah. Um there I'd was watch a, it again there right was a now. little um blood and gore, but not ridiculously bad, but there was some. There were parts that I did not watch. Yeah. Yes. There were parts that I did not watch. They didn't actually show the act but you knew it was happening. So, I saw blood. They did a couple times. Yeah. yeah. So, yes, there's some violence. Yeah. But I love an action movie, and I really like that. And that Liam Helmsworth, I didn't realize that he was one of those brothers. You yeah. know, one of the... the and and uh, uh, they showed his eyes. Well, his brother plays Thor. Mm -hmm. And they showed his eyes up close a couple times. And he has these piercing blue eyes. They're just beautiful. And I thought, I've got to look this guy up. I've got to see who this guy is. Well, you know, he's Thor's brother. So, <laughs> that's, that's why. Okay. So, then I've brought up these two things before. I wanted Kevin to watch Candy and Love and Death. So, Candy... Same story. Different networks, different writers, different everything. Yes. So, Candy was on in 2022, 2022 Hulu, and it's about Candy Montgomery, and Candy Montgomery, this is a real life story, it really happened, she, uh, she basically kills this woman, she kills, uh, Betty Gore, mm -hmm. Gore, imagine, she's killing the gore. I just think that that's funny that that happened that way. I mean, it's not funny, but it's ironic. Interesting. It's yeah. interesting. Um, so, Candy stars Jessica Bill plays Candy Montgomery, and Melanie Linsky plays Betty Gore. If you've ever seen Stephen King's Rose Red, Melanie Linsky plays in that. She also plays in one I never can remember the name of. It has Nicole Kidman. Anyway, she Ooh, plays... No, 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 lies. Something lies. Well, big little lies. Something like that. You're yeah. right. Yeah. You're right. She <laughs> plays on that. <laughs> and then Love and Death was 2023 on Max. And um, uh, Elizabeth Olsen plays Candy Montgomery. And Lily Rabe, I don't know how to say her name properly, plays Betty Gore. And Lily Rabe was in... American Horror Story. American Horror Story, yeah. yes. So, this is where you come in. The I like the Love and Death one be better. Okay, that's interesting. I think they fleshed out the story better. Uh, they also hit more of the court side of it. They did. And the but they didn't portray the Gore lady, uh, Betty Gore. They didn't portray her in in the same way. No, so you didn't. don't know which one's true. Like in the first one, the candy one. If you haven't watched these, I apologize. I'm, I'm probably they've gonna, been out long enough. I'm, I'm probably going to spoil something. I'm sure I'll try not yeah. to, but I probably will. Um, well, you know that. Yeah, she does. yeah but, you know she does. But so. in the candy show, they make Betty Gore really seem like very antsy, kind of neurotic, and really kind of kind of not all there. Uh -huh. Whereas in The Love and Death, she acts a little bit like that, but not, not to the extent that she does in that candy show. Because in candy, she's like, ah, well, children crying, ah. You know, that kind of stuff. And they never portrayed that in that Love and Death one. Well, and in Candy, 
they go through this whole thing where they bring in this foster child. Yeah. And I think that was just to show that she, her her anxiety and stuff. I think it was just supposed to show that. And they, it's so bad to actually remove the kid from the house. I mean, that's kind of, that's what they showed. She they, removed the kid from the house. Yeah, because she, cause she couldn't handle it. But yeah. in Love and Death, they never even mentioned that it, it even happening. Right. Um, I don't know. It's just, I, I like the way they went through the story in the Love and Death better. But in Candy, they do make it seem like Betty Gore, like she has all these issues. So just below the surface, you could see where she could potentially go off at any moment. Right, right. You can and, see And you that. don't necessarily see that in the Love and Death one, but I, I mean, it's there, but it's not. I, that that's the part they didn't betray. So what did you think about because uh, about just the um, the seven? I, I thought the music the music in Love and Death was, was better. Awesome. Yeah. It was they played some really really good music. But I'm a huge well, fan. Of, there's no telling who Max owns as far as music companies. Uh, well, so they could use they, whatever they wanted. Yeah, to. the music was awesome. Yeah. Um, but, I don't know. I just think I think the acting in both were good. It was just different. It was different portrayals of it. Right. I think the relationship between Candy and Alan. Uh, yeah, I think um, it was, that the, was Alan. The, yeah. the affair. I think that was portrayed differently in both shows. They were. They were. One was like more, um, like more sexual, and whereas the other one was more of a like a relationship, a friendship. Yes, you know? I think in Love and Death they made it seem like more of a friendship. Yeah, because... like they they wouldn't even show them having sex. They would just have them sitting there on the bed talking about stuff. Or, or like they were in the bathtub together, and yeah, they would just, just talking talk and, stuff. and talk. And whereas that... the other one was, it seemed like it was all about just a sexual relationship. Yeah, like so, this is like like we're doing this for each other and then that's it. Yeah. yeah. So so if you picked one, I would pick Love and Death. If you want to watch both of them, though, they both have they're both good shows uh -huh. and, and they're told in slightly different ways. So it's, To make them both interesting. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm but, glad you enjoy yeah, both. I enjoy I enjoy both of them, but if I had to pick one, I'd be Love and Death. Right. Okay. So Plus then, I like looking at her better too. Uh, Elizabeth also. <laughs> you know, I like her Not that I don't too. mind um, who played Jessica oh, Biel. Listen. Jessica Biel's pretty. I just... Uh, no, no, no. And Jessica Biel in Candy. Looked she, awful. She hair. looked awful. Damn. She looked... I've ne we both discussed this, so you can't say she looked good in that movie. No, I'm saying her as a person. She's she's a, she's an attractive woman. It's just that movie, Candy, just goes to show you that a bad hairstyle <laughs> can make a lot of difference. Oh <laughs> my gosh, it is the worst hair. Yeah, it's that, but then it's a perm hair. When you see the real Candy Montgomery, she had that hair during one picture. But they're in one picture, oh, though. And they oh. never did that during the love and death. They never gave her the perm. No. Elizabeth Olsen no. always had... They fixed her hair a little differently, but yeah. they never did the kinky perm. Right. But Elizabeth Olsen, if you don't know, she's the one that plays Wanda, WandaVision. Yeah. Um, and I like her, too. Yeah, uh, I, do. I really like I, I her. I don't know. I, just, I think... But, they... but Jessica Bill did a great job oh, yeah. acting. Yeah, yeah. She just looked horrible. Yeah. That, okay. Yeah. They, he, she had the... Um, um, what's the Brady Bunch dad? Um, in the Brady Bunch. Anyway, the dad in Brady Bunch, she had that hair. The, the power. That pink, kinky, curly uh -huh. perm. <laughs> yeah, he didn't have that at the beginning. No, but right? he did later. Yeah. Um, so now you've got me wondering what his name Mike. Carol and Mike. That's it. Carol and Mike, Mike Brady. Brady. Yeah. Mike Brady. Okay, the last thing we watched, and I saved this for last. Besides our regular stuff we mentioned. Besides right? the regular stuff. So we're watching other TV shows. We actually just started a couple of things last night, but I don't want to talk about it this month. We'll talk about it next month when we finish both of them. Mm -hmm. um, the last thing that we watched and and that I'm going to bring up was my favorite thing of the whole month. And it completely shocked me. That it's that my favorite, favorite thing? Oh, yeah. I would literally watch it right I now. I know. It's surprising because I was thinking she's going to hate this. I'm going to suggest this movie and she's going to hate it and go, why in the heck could you make me watch this? Kevin and, was dying to see this. Yeah, I wanted to see it and then I was worried about telling her about it. It's called Poor Things and it's 2023 Hulu. It's Emma Stone, Mark Ruffalo, and William Defoe. 
and I'll just read it what it says. It says the incredible tale about the fantastical evolution of Bella Baxter, a young woman brought back to life by the brilliant and unorthodox scientist, Dr. Godwin Baxter. So William Defoe plays the scientist. Godwin. Huh? Godwin. Yeah, Godwin. William Defoe plays Godwin. And then you have Emma Stone plays uh, Bella, and then you have Mark Ruffalo. I, it's going to be hard to top this movie uh, with anything else. I absolutely adored it. Yeah. Just now, going into it, there's a lot of sexuality in it. There's a lot of sex. A lot of sex. There's a lot of sex. Uh, period. So if you if you don't want to see that kind of stuff, it's sex. avoid this. It's sexuality and then sex, the whole movie. Sex, it sex, pretty sex, much sex, is. sex. Yeah. But. Pretty early. <laughs> okay, but I have to tell you. It's done, it fits with the story. It's not like. It's done differently than what you're thinking. In most movies, when you see uh, a sex scene, then it seems, it can almost seem dirty or seedy. Yeah. Or, or they or, just stuck that in there just to get a little nudity in there. Yes. This is done in a very light-hearted, um, almost happy, whimsical, uh, joyful, uh, jubilant way to where you don't mind watching it at all. Yeah. And you it, actually it's, it's look different. forward to, okay, when she... What's she gonna do next? Again? What's she gonna do again? Um, yeah, Emma Stone, you you see everything. You see everything. Um, but I, I I've never said that before about like sex scenes in movies. I haven't, and and not that I have an issue with it in other movies, but in this movie, it is done in a way that I've never seen it done before. And the costumes and the, Over the scenery. Top. Oh, just, it's a very whimsical is the best word I can work I can come with. It's kinda like it's it's it's, it, it's kinda like Willy Wonka, but in a yes, adult themed Willy yes, Wonka world. And it makes <laughs> your eyes watching this, this world, it makes you so happy uh, to watch it because you keep seeing all these things. That It um, took place in like Victorian times, but it's like a steampunky Wow, there's a boring. there's an artist that I love. Um, well, uh, Edward Gorey, um, but there's another Mark Ryden. Yeah, Mark, I can see that that kind of style. Yeah. Mark Edward Gorey, Mark Ryden. If you know who I'm talking about, those those artists. Um, this movie is like a mix of both of those, and I thought it was absolutely yeah. brilliant. You just got you and loved you got, it. You got to stick with it at the very beginning because you're like, what the heck's going on at the very beginning? Yes, and we have to say too, it's like The Wizard of Oz, and it starts out in black and white. In black and white. It's just stay at some point in time, it turns into color, and neither one of us can pick that. Exact I can't moment. pinpoint when it turned to color. I think I remember. I think I know, but I don't want to say. But it like know. it does have like that Wizard of Oz thing where it goes from black and white to color and honestly you're just so like engrossed you just I, I didn't even realize exactly when it happened but I want to watch it again because I think you'd pick up different things oh you would definitely pick up different things and at first when it ended um, I'm not going to give anything away absolutely not because I want you to see it but at first when we watched it Kevin had a different ending and I told Kevin, I said, I like your ending better. I said, I wish it had ended the way that you suggested. But I did like the way it ended too. It ended because it ended. It ended opening up something um, better than it would have if they'd done my way. Right, but I do like your way. Yeah. Your way could have, like, if they had done what an if, alternate ending. Yeah, if they had done an alternate ending. Kevin's ending absolutely could have been an alternate yeah. ending. Of course, it's based on a book, so they're right. going to use my ending. But <laughs> they're going to use the book ending. Right, but uh, yeah, it's based on a book. Yeah. But absolutely, if you are, um, you don't want to watch it with children. No. Um, at all. No. <laughs> um, like I said, if you're sensitive to any kind of sexuality at all, then, then just, don't, just watch don't watch it. Don't watch it. Just avoid it. Yeah. Uh, that was my favorite thing of the month. That was my very, very favorite yeah, thing. Yeah, and like I said, it's so quirky and weird and kind of whimsical and strange that I thought Tanya would absolutely hate it. And then she's sitting over there 
uh, loving every moment of it. And it's like, does she like it or not? And then at the end of it, she goes, I loved it. And I'm <laughs> like, well, I'm glad. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, like I have, ever since we watched it the first time, I've wanted to sit down and watch it again. Yeah. But there's so many other things to watch that, that we have. And it's like, uh, well, I, you know, I'll watch something different. Yeah. And it's long. I, I didn't write down. Movie. I didn't write down how long I can it is, look it up but, real it, quick. but it is a longer movie. It, so. it is. I agree. It seemed like it's about three hours, but I, I could be it, wrong. Yeah, it 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 was longer, but uh, it maybe it could have been because I was on the treadmill too, and it made it seem yeah. Because I'm walking the whole time we were watching that. I was actually walking, and uh, so one second, so that that could have been why. Um, that one, I really, I, I like that. Uh, a lot of the other things were, uh, some people just couldn't handle. A lot of the things that I watched this month were things that really happened. It's and two, two hours and 20 minutes, so it's not as long as we thought. No, but it's, it's still, long, it's still but, longer. Yeah. Um, and you know what? That's, not as long as Doom is. I want to go see it in theaters, but I don't think I can handle three hours. I, that's what I was going to say. We both would love to go see it in the theater because uh, we've watched Dune, and so we, I'd like to see the the second one. Um, but it, it without it having an intermission, then I'm not going to go because I know for a fact um, I was dying at the end of the Barbie movie. And <laughs> and Ashley and I went to the bathroom right yeah. before the Barbie. And we movie. don't drink a lot beforehand. We try not to drink a lot. Right. I tried not to drink a lot beforehand. I definitely did not have a Coke during the movie. I didn't have anything to drink whatsoever. And by the end of the Barbie movie, I was, I thought I'm not going to make it to that bathroom. <laughs> so there's no way for Dune that I'm going to be able to sit there for, for mm -hmm. three hours. So they really need to bring back. I don't know why the they don't do the intermission. Because you, I think to, they don't want people to move in and out of the theaters. I think they can't watch them. Yeah, they they're worried about people. Because think about it, when they used to have intermissions, they had what two screens at the most. I mean, right. that was a lot. They right. probably just have one screen. Well, when I went to see, and there a was movie, more like a more like a show, you know, like a like a live show, a Broadway show. You know, mm -hmm. they break up, everybody goes to the bathroom, get drinks, and they come back. Yes. Yeah. When I went, when I saw one with the intermission, it was uh, The Sound of Music, uh -huh. and it was at the Kentucky Theater yeah, in Lexington. It was, yeah, it was the only movie there. So they can, of course, they don't care if you come and go, and mm -hmm. it was really easy for them. But, I mean, there was an intermission in the middle of that movie. And uh, just, yeah, they, they can't do that, I understand. But for that reason, that's why I couldn't go. Because yeah. it would just tick me off to leave. And miss something. And miss, I don't want to miss anything. I, I don't want to miss one, even if it's something that's they not, not that important. Big a deal. Because there was a website that would tell you. There was an app on your phone that would tell you when to, when to potty or something like when that. When it's safe to go to the bathroom. I don't want to miss a moment of it, yeah. especially after you're paying so much money. You know, you don't want to miss any right. of it. So, yeah. so we'll probably, probably wait till it comes out on something we can watch at home. Yeah, exactly. And watch shorter movies in yeah. the theater. <laughs> yeah. So you'll have to let us know. Yeah, especially the poor things. If you ever if you've ever seen it or if you go watch it, what do you think? I have about to hear afterwards? you I have to hear your thoughts. Yeah. I have to Just hear Just don't be because, easily offended because I'm telling you. It's and it's one of those movies, don't you think? You will either love it. Or hate it. Oh, yeah. I don't think there's any in between because probably not. You're really probably don't. not going to go out and go. Eh. You know, you're probably going to go. Oh, that was horrible. Or why in the heck does she recommend it? Uh huh. You you yeah, very well could so. hate it. Yeah. But I loved it. It was just the it surprise of the month. Yeah. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Leave us comments below what you're watching, what you've watched, and all that. And uh, we'll see you at the end of April.